G'day, g'day everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review videos. Uh, today we are going to be continuing with our Mutant series, uh, taking out the five-star legendary green hero, Ikwani, the Blade Horned Bio Mutant. Um, so Ikwani is available for summons from the Mutant Portal, which we saw there, which is tied to the Mutant Mayhem Challenge event. This one rolls around once every 16 weeks. It's on a rotation a monthly rotation with three other challenge events so you get one challenge event every month so three of them um, in between so it's every 16 weeks um, as we can see uh, the portal does have some featured heroes which does boost the odds a little bit um, so the odds for summoning a featured hero from this portal is uh, one percent and a chance for summoning one of the non-featured heroes is 0.6 percent so what that translates to is on 100 summons you've got a 63 odd percent chance of summoning either of the featured heroes and a 45 percent chance of of summoning any of the unfeatured heroes so not the greatest odds when they're unfeatured uh, bearing in mind that that also reduces further because that's for any of them not for Aquani specifically um, so Aquani was added with to Puzzle Combat with the very first edition of the Mutant Mayhem Challenge event. Uh, the family in the portal was expanded an additional three times uh, since then. There was one off uh, once in March 23, once in September 23, and then again most recently in January 2024. Um, I will mention Mutant Mayhem is the newest of the challenge events. It is substantially newer, several years newer than the original three challenge events. Um, there is theoretically one more to come because we don't yet have a blue reflect event but when or if that will ever actually be added to the game is anyone's guess no one really knows what's going on with it uh, flipping over to my roster and we can take a look at his artwork um, so we can see here his artwork he's kind of got the blade horns going on up top there um, got the samurai the dual samurai swords i think they're i don't know naga kibas maybe a little bit long i don't know so we got the the um What's the word for it? Completely lost my train of thought. Anyway, so we've got some blades, we've got the punk action going, um, got some claw hoof things as well. Um, katanas, that's the word. He's got dual wielding katanas. My goodness, I don't know where my brain went there. Um, but anyway, that's his artwork. Pause it if you wish to, and we shall carry on. So he is a member of the mutant family, or the... The official term for it is the mutant goons family but i just call it the mutant family so as a member of this family aquani has a 10 percent chance to cast natural selection uh, whenever he uses his special skill so what this is going to do is it's going to do one of three things so it'll only do one of the three and it's completely random which one you get so option one is that you'll get an attack and accuracy bonus um, giving plus 140 attack and plus 44 percent accuracy to all allies for three turns each um, you'll also alternatively you can have option two which is to apply a debuff shield to all allies for three turns making them immune to new status effects and option three is that it does a damage over time reversal to all allies for three turns where they will instead of taking damage from dot ailments they are going to t create health instead uh, so a little bit confusing with it there is a lot going on there but realistically all three of them are fairly good perks uh, option three is probably the the weakest uh, and i'd say that option two is probably the strongest of the three options but yeah a little bit confusing it's also very confusing when you encounter it on defense teams because you don't really know exactly which one's gone on uh, until you wait for the um, effect to fully process through and you can see the buff so um Mutant family members will also gain a stat bonus, stat bonus, a stat bonus if there are multiple unique heroes in the battle from the mutant family. Specifically, they'll gain a plus two, four, six, or eight percent attack and defense um, if there is two, three, four, or five unique members of the mutant family in a battle. Uh, notably, do have to be unique heroes, so you can't just bring along two copies of Aquani. It's got to be two different heroes, such as Aquani and Xyloid or Aquani and Syntax, for example. In terms of Aquani's personal stats, he comes in with a massive 777 attack, a 686 defense, and a 1399 HP grade. I say massive, but it's probably not huge compared to some of the more, the very, very new heroes added, but it is still a pretty beefy attack stat, so there is that skewing going from his defense towards attack. Um, 
His special skill speed is set to 64, which is fast. Um, this requires nine tiles to charge or five ghosted tiles. It does unfortunately need plus one to speed break him. Uh, that break occurs at 65, but you can achieve that using the Trailblazer SVK, which gives you plus six. Um, it is the only green speed gun available in the game at the moment. Um, so yeah. As a result of that, uh, you can't actually get a double break going on Aquani because you need plus eight. Um, and with the plus six weapon and the class node, it's not quite enough to tip him over the edge uh, and get that double break. So you can only get a single break at this time. Uh, interestingly, you can get that single break using his class node, which you can get at plus eight. So that's a 2% speed improvement um, on his class talent tree. So the class node is worthwhile if you've got limited speed guns. So in my case, I did pick it up because my speed weapons, I only have one of them. Uh, and there's sometimes better heroes to equip the, the gun to than Aquani. So yeah. In term, speaking of his class, he is a member of the Recon class, which grants the hero a chance to evade incoming damage from special skills uh, and gain 20% charge for each successful evasion. Um, I do love this perk a lot. Uh, it offers a discrete chance to dodge damage, uh, which is calculated separately from all the other dodge bonuses in the game. Um, and then the other side of it is that you're also getting free 20% charge as well. Downside is it is only applying to special skill damage. Um, so you take all other forms of damage and you'll also receive any ailments that are attributed to that special skill as well. Uh, by way of an emblem path, um, I personally, for my copy of Aquani, I went with an attacking path. Um, so you can see here's the path that I've started on. Um, I went attack at the first node, attack at the second node, um, speed at the, the third direction. Um, and then we, if we were to keep going, this is what the final path would look like. So we'd go attack, attack, attack. I went attack for that speed node, but if you've got a gluttony of speed weapons, then you probably could come and get this attack node instead. Um, but I personally, I went the speed node because I needed it. Uh, we go attack again, and then we get down towards the bottom, we'd also go attack. You can probably stop at plus um, 18, uh, plus 19, so, yeah, plus 18, sorry, um, because you don't really need those final two nodes. Um, they're not really achieving too much in terms of him getting much improvement, so I'd be stopping there at plus 18. Uh, the 19 and 20, definitely not really worth the emblem emblem output, so yeah. Um, heading back to his special his card, sorry, and we can take a look at his special skill. So his special skill is titled Slice and Dice, and at 64 charge speed and level 10 skill, it will deal 270% damage to the target, applying a bleed ailment, which does minus 309 HP over three turns. If, however, the target already has an existing bleed ailment, a bleed burst is triggered, which deals double the bleed damage, so that's 618 HP, and it deals it instantly. Uh, the bleed burst will then also clear any and all bleed ailments applying to the target. Uh, finally, it applies an aim shield, which makes the caster immune to new accuracy status ailments for three turns, but it will also clear all existing accuracy ailments that they have. So splitting that apart a little bit, um, we'll start with off of just his direct damage, specifically the 270% damage, and then we'll get to the other bits uh, shortly. So. Uh, how Aquani fits into all of this, um, it's a little bit hard to calculate direct damage output and calculate it consistently because there's a lot of variation to that calculation. So what I do however do is I compare heroes based on their attack power which feeds into the damage calculation and then I normalize it by using the number of tiles to charge their skills. So in terms of Aquani, he has an attack power of 2098. We calculate that by taking his 777 attack stat multiplied by the 270% in his skill and that comes out at 2098 attack power. Uh, he requires nine tiles to charge, so we divide the 2098 by nine, and that comes in with an attack power per tile of 233 attack power per tile, which ranks him number seven, as we can see there. It's not, he's not hugely far up the list in terms of his immediate direct damage, but he's also a little bit above the bottom half of the, the board as well. So he's in a, a little bit of in a middle pack, if you will, in a tight clump with, you know, Aurora, Von Hagen, and Gearbox when he's attacking armor. So there's a nice little clump there. Step behind the best ones in Fiddle, Minamoto, and that sort of thing, but also a step above the worst ones in, you know, Gearbox, Bit Gearbox, Richter, and Walker, um, who are down the bottom there. 
Um, moving on to the bleed burst, this is where things get a little bit complicated, but it's also incredibly simple. So essentially, the really simple version is, if there's no bleed ailment on the target, he's going to make them bleed for 309 HP over three turns. So 103 HP loss per turn. If there is a bleed ailment on the target already, what it does is instead of doing minus 309 HP over two, three turns, it will instantaneously deal the double the amount of bleed on his skill. So in this case, it is 309 by two, so 618 HP gone instantly. For reference, if we try to back calculate that through the damage calculation, it works out as being effectively a bonus 430% snipe of damage on the target. So not only are you getting the base 270% damage, but you're also getting a 430% bonus snipe if you've got a pre-existing bleed ailment. So where that comes in on the attack power per tile graphs and stuff is it comes in with a humongous attack power per tile of 604, roughly. Like, I'm not going to say it's exactly that because I'm back calculating using approximation. So it is a phenomenal amount of damage output that he gains from the bleed burst. There are a couple notes that I need to make about it. Um, so number one, the bleed scales depending on the level of his ability, right? All of the, uh, all DOT ailments are not fixed at their maximum amount. They ha you have to work up to them using skill books. So in the case of Aquani, it's 309 or 618 at 10 out of 10 skill. Me, my Aquani is only at eight out of 10, which is 279 or 558 damage. It is still a considerable amount of damage at eight out of a 10 um, skill, but I just don't have the skill books available to just pump them into every hero. So I'm a bit careful and um, stingy with how I actually apply those skill books. So that's number one. Uh, you have to be at 10 out of 10 to get that full damage output, but even at lesser amounts, it is still a considerable quantity of damage. Number two is that you do need to have a pre-existing bleed ailment, but there are a lot of things that actually constitute in the game code as being a bleed ailment. There's a lot of things that are considered that. So you've got things like bleed burst. So if you pre, if you um, apply Aquani's ability once and then turn around and smash him again in two turns, you can get, you know, 206 damage plus then the immediate 618 damage. Uh, you've also got um, the regular bleed ailment. Uh, such as the one that comes from Nardi, you can get the boosted or reset bleed ailment, which comes from someone like Night Owl. You've got the Master Weapon Quest weapons. These give off a bleed ailment on the Rend ones. Um, so which ones those are, sorry, just for clarity, is ones that are like the CRB Carnivore. This counts as bleed. You've also got, really interestingly, um, is the Assault class actually counts as bleed. This wound effect says there, apply bleeding from normal damage blah 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 so there are a lot of ways that you can actually set up the bleed prior to triggering Aquani's bleed burst so you can pretty well fairly regularly guarantee yourself that bonus damage each and every cast so me personally um i pair my Aquani with naja um or with another green hero who's equipped with the crb carnivore Either of those ways, really easy to trigger it. If you've got multiple Aquanis, um, a good option might be someone like uh, Grunt here. He, de he deals out bleed to all enemies. So you've got a full pick of choices to shoot at. Um, Night Owl, Night Owl does bleed to three enemies. Um, Grizzle G, he does bleed to all enemies. There's a lot of choices you can have to set up that bleed. The third thing that's worth noting about the bleed burst is that it does clear all pre-existing bleed ailments. So, what this means is that if you've got a hefty bleed, such as the one from Aquani, you might actually be better off waiting a turn or two to get the most effect out of those bleed ailments before triggering the bleed burst. Because if you trigger it too early, you lose some effectiveness from, from that DOT ailment. Um, so that is just something to consider it as well. So you can either wait for it to run its course or almost run its course, um, have one turn left on it, or the other option is just pair it with something with crap damage output from the bleed, such as a master weapon gun, for example. Um, moving right along, because I am talking a little bit there, um, the final part of his skill is the aim shield for himself. It blocks new status ailments affecting his accuracy. It is a nice ability. It is a little bit niche, though, in that it applies only to a single ailment being inaccuracy. Uh, it's not even a widely used effect. Like, it's not on a huge amount of heroes, um, the blind ailment. So... 
Um, as I said as well, it is not widely known that the accuracy shield or aim shield actually cleanses accuracy elements as well. Um, but yeah, uh, I will point out though as well, um, it only blocks it when the ailment specifically only affects accuracy. Um, I say this because you get a lot of questions about blunderbuss. Um, blunderbuss is not considered an accuracy ailment. It's con considered as double. It's both an attack buff and an accuracy ailment in one effect. If it was listed as two different effects, it would have two different icons. So you'd have both an attack up icon and an accuracy down icon, which would mean that Aquani would then block the inaccuracy from Blunderbuss. But that's not the case. They're considered one effect, which means that Aquani can't block it. All right, put that out there nice and early. So overall, I really love Aquani. I find him to be incredibly useful in attack. Um, as I said, if you can trigger that bleed burst, his damage output is phenomenal. It is the best green sniping damage output in the game by far if you can trigger that bleed burst and there are a lot of opportunities to trigger that bleed burst you can set it up so many different ways um, that it is actually a little bit silly um yeah he's he's probably not a defensive hero realistically um unless you've also got another doa3 or doa5 bleed hero because it does require a little bit of targeting input which the ai is not known for um so you do have to give them a helping hand with that but anyway uh, for his grading a grade for war and raid attacks he is a phenomenal attacking hero very very good war machine i'm going to give him a b plus um he's got a very good damage output and again you can set the bleed up quite easily and he's got a high attack stat as well uh, for eventing i'm going to give him a b minus uh, single target low makes him less um useful but he does still have quite a bit of damage output, so he can be helpful at cleaning off the, the bulky or chunky um, boss in the waves. Uh, for raid and war defenses, I'm only going to give him a C+. He's probably best as a flank or a wing, but as I said, to get the most out of his damage output, you need existing bleed, and you need it to be AoE bleed. Otherwise, he is just dealing off that 270% damage plus a three-turn ailment. Um, so yeah, if you were going to set it up, maybe a bleeder at left flank and a Kwani at right flank, as an example. Um, for tournament settings, I'm going to pop, bump him up to an A grade again on attack and a C plus on defense. Uh, DOT ailments are much more powerful in Bloody Battle because cleanse is often tied with healers and healing is restricted in these tournament settings. So, you know, it is a little bit more prevalent and more effective there. Uh, buff booster, I'm going to give him an A grade and a C plus. He does create a buff for himself, um, which is why he's not getting knocked down a bit. Uh, and then charged attacks, I am going to bump him down a touch because he doesn't get really any speed improvement at all. Uh, so an A minus for attack and a C grade for defense. So overall for Aquani's grading, that comes in as an A minus for his attack grade and a C plus for his defense grade. And that concludes the content that I've got for this review of Aquani. Uh, as always, this is just my personal views on these heroes. I do love reading your thoughts and feedback on them. Um, so please do jump down to the comments section and drop me a note there. I love reading them and I try to reply to as many of you as I can. Um, if you did enjoy the video and found it to be useful, please like the video, subscribe to my channel. There's heaps more stuff like this floating around. But most importantly, share the video around because if it was useful for yourself, chances are it's also going to be useful to the other people you play with as well. So... Thank you once again for joining me for this review. Uh, I do hope that it was useful and I do hope that I see you again soon. But until then, please stay safe, good luck and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.